Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video we're going to be going over deck, uh, or the version 2 of the Katsu deck profile that I've been working on for the Outsider set. Um, just kind of give my play experiences, some changes that I've made, and just kind of where I'm at with the deck right now. This isn't like a full-blown deck tech, it's more of an update, so um, if you want kind of more... Uh, questions on the deck as a whole just leave a comment down below if you like this type of content please leave a like comment subscribe join the discord down below super super active community over 400 members right now um really love where the community is going and if you want to support the channel in a different way uh check out the patreon we have great benefits that allow you to see videos uh early a day early as well as be able to join the discussion among under patreon members with deck techs and things of that nature so going into the deck uh in iteration one of my Outsiders Katsu was pretty standard. I had three Bonds of Ancestry, three Descendant Gust Waves, three Be Like Waters, um, and then added in cards like Stab Wound, Conceal Blade. So I had a good amount of the Outsider cards along with Spinning Wheel Kick. Um, what I was noticing was on hands that weren't the Bonds of Ancestry surging like line, like it ended up just feeling really bad. Uh, what I've found is the power of this deck now, yes, it's in its consistency with Bonds of Ancestry and being able to have double tutor turns, uh, potentially triple tutor turns if you get Mask of Momentum trigger. Um, that's where the power of the deck is. That's where the consistency lies, and you want that play line as much as humanly possible. So because of that, the biggest change I made was I removed the leg tap line, which is three leg taps and then two red rising knee thrusts to fit three up, free up five slots in my deck. I ended up adding two yellow Bonds of Ancestry, two yellow surging strikes, um, and then ab was able to just sure up some of my other ratios. Um, the main reason for this is, like I said, most of the time in most matchups, the way I find I'm winning is I do like two or three really good bond turns with 20 plus damage, and then you just take tempo and you whittle them down long enough to where now you can just Kadachi lock them. Because of that, I want to see that Bonds turn as quickly as possible and as often as possible. So I essentially, counting Be Like Water, have eight sur eight Surgings in the deck. I have five Bonds of Ancestries and then six Gust Waves, right? Um, that's kind of the main reason for it uh, and kind of like where I'm sitting with the deck. Uh, also, what I ended up doing was I added in Blue Flick Flack. Uh, I have noticed like with some of the decks that are really good and really efficient at blocking, you kind of have to play your own little mid-range to fatigue plan until you can set up the combo turn. So because of that, I added in blue flick flax just to give some of my cards like spinning wheel kick and 100 wins a four block or a five block with some of my combo cards if I absolutely have to block with them. Um, that was kind of a big thing for me. And then finally, my blues changed, I think, slightly. I did have Stab Wound in there um, with Winds of Eternity, Lord of Wind, Dishonor, and, and Conceal Blade. And I basically replaced Stab Wound with the Flick Flax, right? Because um, Stab Wound for me, although it's a really cool card, I think it for, fits better with the Assassin playline than the Ninja playline playlines. Um, another option you could look at if you don't like Blue Flick Flack is Knives Out. I think that'd be a really good one late game to have your Kadachis come in for two each, especially like if you have two blues and a fluster fist, normally like that's just going to be Kadachi, Kadachi, fluster fist. But with knife, one of those blues is knives out. All of a sudden it's Kadachi for two, Kadachi for two, fluster fist. And it allows them to not just be able to block with uh, one power equipment, which or one block equipment, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, I'm just basically setting up for that bonds turn as much as humanly possible. Um, and then having a lot of deck recursion, uh, like putting threats back into the deck. 100 wins and the winds of eternity helps me cycle cards back in. Uh, doing spinning wheel kick and the spinning wheel kick helps me put cards back in on hit. Like just a lot of ways to put threats back in the deck. I still have one McGinchy because I think in fatigue matchups, you really need to try to hold this McGinchy and then use the Lord of Wind line in order to cycle threats back into your deck pretty efficiently. Um, so I have kept that in. But overall, I felt this deck, it's not as red line aggro. Like, you're not going to have this crazy starter every single turn. I mean, the prior list had, if we look at it, had three, six, because I count Descendant as a starter, um, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 22, 22 starters, essentially. Whereas this list, I think, has 23, 6, um, 9, 12, 15, 18, 20, 20 starters. So basically about the same, but there's a little bit less in starters. However, its combo potential is very, very, very high. You're basically threatening the surging line because you have eight surgings almost every turn um, or close to it. You might have one or two turns off, but for the most part, you're going to be threatening this crazy line pretty much every turn. Um for as far as matchups, I've 
I'm at 61% win rate, which, again, just like in the Azalea deck tech, I don't care about win rate right now because I'm constantly swapping cards out. But I am doing pretty good against every single matchup, except old time I'm still trying to figure out, like, the best way to go about that. But I've only played two. And then Azalea is not a good matchup for Ninja right now. Azalea's power level is pretty stupid. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, overall, the deck's feeling really, really good. I will say the sideboard, I made some changes. I put Cyclone Roundhouse into the sideboard because what I'm noticing is this card's text really doesn't matter unless they're blocking with equipment or you're trying to prevent them from blocking with equipment pretty pretty consistently. So this text matters against Warrior because you can get rid of Courage of Bladehold if they block with it. It matters against Oldheim, obviously, because you can get rid of Rampart if they block with it. Um, it can even matter against Guardian in general if you want to get rid of some of their like heavy block equipment really quickly. Assassin, this is really good into as well. Um but if it's not one of those car, one of those decks where like equipment is a super either a a premium into the into their game plan against you, or b just good against you in block terms, like it's basically a vanilla two for five, and it just it it's a little clunky because of that, right? So I put in the sideboard uh, three command and conquers because Rangers just going to be a force this meta in my opinion. Three sink belows for the fatigue matchups so we can kind of take time and really set up our turns properly and kind of buy our life a little bit. Two, visit the Floating Dojos, again, for fatigue matchups like uh, Arachne and Oldheim. Um, and then Tunic versus Heart and Crosstrap. Basically, Heart and Crosstrap is ran into all the aggro matchups. If we are run playing a Dory or a um, Reinar or a the Mirror or Phi, we're going to be running those. Um, even Azalea, I'll run Heart and Crosstrap just so I can get the combo off right when I need to. Tunic is for most everything else. Mask of Pouncing Lynx comes in against Arachne. It comes in against Icelander, and it comes in against Oldheim now. Um, and then Vambrance also comes in against Oldheim. I haven't really got to test this a whole lot. I've only been testing on Azalea. But I will say in, with Azalea, Vambrance feels really great. With with Katsu, you're really looking to try to get them close to Kadachi Lock, maybe single-digit life. And then you really start utilizing Vambrance to its fullest potential because you can prevent them from just blocking a Kadachi with their uh, crown. Um, also it can help with break points if you have, if you're trying to get a mass trigger, uh, but good old times are going to be able to play around that in my opinion. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm really happy with the list. It's doing pretty well. And honestly, the list has gotten like better and better as time's gone on. I mean, even in the last like five days since I've honed, honed in on it, um, we're basically like eight and three, which isn't crazy, but it's not bad or 11 and four is the way you look at it. So, um, Doing really well, well with it, really happy with it, and it's slowly getting to where I want it. Um, I think Katsu's in a pretty good spot. But, yeah, let me know what you think of the list and the updates. Uh, you can go back and check out version one of my list in, the, in my channel if you kind of want to compare and contrast the two deck lists and see what, what playlist uh, fits best for you. The last thing I say I like about this list is it has 3, 8, 11. Um, let's not even count these for a second. 14, um, 15, 16. Uh, 19, 20, 23, 26, 29, 32, three blocks in the list, which is honestly a little low, uh, normal, but it's still pretty good for how red line the list is, uh, with six defense reactions, which can then buff your two blocks to three blocks or four blocks. Right. So overall, I'm really liking the block value in the list as well. Um, and I'm really happy with it, but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on the list. Uh, any changes you would make or kind of what the differences are. Um, I would love to hear it. This is more just like an update to where I'm at with the list so far. Um, and yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe. If not, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you, and I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much.